Bern, the capital of Switzerland, lies at the heart of the country. The origin of the name isn't certain. Although Bern means beer in German, some say it was named after Verona, the Italian city, which during the Middle Ages was also called Bern. But local folklore suggests that the name comes from the city's founder, Duke Berthold V, in 1191, after he promised to name the city based on the first wild animal he encountered in the area, which happened to be a bear. Bern is fairly well known for having a large number of medieval fountains, which at an earlier time were much more of a social significance. People would use them practically for drinking water, but also as popular social hangouts. They weren't just decorative, but served as a very real community lubricant, which underpinned the very fabric of Bern's culture. Like many European cities, Bern has what is known as the Old Town, an area which retains much of the city's architecture and cultural history, contrasting with the more contemporary buildings, shopping centres and transport hubs found elsewhere. It is here where many of the old fountains can be discovered, in particular the eleven folklore fountains, which represent figures from local and wider mythology, built in the 16th century by sculptor Hans Geng. The fountains are all protected UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Not much is known about Geng personally, other than the fact that he was probably of South German origin. His work can be found around the region, and he is most famous for the eleven burned fountains, and seven other fountains found in Freiburg. His work reflects the cultural transitions occurring in Europe during the time of the Renaissance. He adopts a realism and lifelike representation in his figures, yet retains much of the allegorical, mythological nature of the pre-literal worldview, which was fast becoming the less dominant cultural force in place of a more scientific one. Grieng stood on the periphery of both worlds and integrated the essence of both in his sculptures, the literal and the abstract. From his perspectives, perhaps he saw that culture was relative, which is ironic in that physicist Albert Einstein developed his theory of relativity in a house found on the exact same road where many of the fountains are located. This film documents those 11 fountains and the personal journey made upon discovering them within the old town of Bern. The Piper was built between 1545 and 1546. In actual fact, there is no certainty that Gieng sculpted all 11 of the statues, as they were all unsigned. However, the Piper is one of three which almost certainly was, with the others being so similar in style that it seems unlikely to have been anybody else. The Piper appears to represent the Pied Piper of Hamelin, a folk tale dating back to the 1300s originating from the village of Hamelin in Germany, near to where Grieng was supposedly born. In the tale, the Piper is a morally ambiguous character, saving the town from a potential plague by luring hordes of rats away with his magical flute, only to later use the flute to lure the town's children away, never to be seen again, having not been rewarded for his initial act of goodwill. In a sense, the Piper represents Grieng's position on the Renaissance, with the developing rational enlightenment of culture, the poisonous and repressive forces of certain aspects of superstition were beginning to crumble. But also, the childlike innocence of myth and magic were also beginning to get lost too. Many of the fountains stand in the centre of the tram route through the old town, with the rails winding around them. Further along can be found the Anna Seeler Fountain, who, in 1354, requested, as part of her will, that her property be used as a hospital to help the sick when she died. 
This became reality in 1360 under the name Sailorin Spital. In 1531, the hospital was moved to a disused Dominican monastery near Bern and was renamed in Selspital. In 1885, the hospital moved location once more to elsewhere in Bern, where it remains today, as one of the largest and leading hospitals in the city, having strong links to the local university. The jug of water Anna carries looks remarkably similar to the symbolism found in the tarot decks, the star card, part of the major arcana. The same can be said for it mirroring the depiction of the zodiac sign Aquarius. Symbolically, these generally represent the feminine, yin forces of nurture and selflessness and implicit subconscious intuitive morality contained as an offering within the jug for the receiver. These would likely have been known cultural symbols to Gyeng at the time. Other fountains depict symbolism found in the tarot too, as we shall later see. The Marksman Fountain appears to depict a very proud Duke Berthold V, the city of Bern's founder. At his foot stands a small bear with a gun, a loyal companion and no doubt symbolic of the city itself as an ally of Berthold in its infancy. Next is probably the most famous of the eleven fountains, known as the Child Eater. He is a grotesque figure depicted sat down consuming the live bodies of children which he carries in a sack by his side. Many interpretations of this statue have been given. Some say it depicts Krampus, a demon from folklore akin to Santa Claus, except instead of rewarding a child's good behaviour, he kidnaps the child. Another that it depicts the older brother of Byrne's founder, who was incredibly jealous by the success of Duke Berthold V. My favourite interpretation though, is that it represents the Roman god Saturn. Saturn is the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Kronos, the personification of passing time. As already discussed, Gyeng was witnessing the effect of time on culture and society, with the emergence of the Renaissance, and like the Piper, the child eater consumes the innocence of mythology and magic. In folklore, Saturn devours his child for fear of being overthrown by him, and the Greek writer Ovid describes Saturn as bringing in a golden age of prosperity for humanity, all reflections of the emergence of rational thought and its impact for social change. What's more, Saturn is associated with the month January, another possible link to the zodiac in the fountains already described. The zodiac sign of January is Capricorn, the goat, which has been linked to Pan and Baphomet, both earth and nature deities, which were seen as evil and satanic by the Christian church due to the emphasis on earthly pleasures as a possible distraction from the spiritual divine. The first recorded use of the name Child Eater was recorded in 1666, with 666 being known as the Mark of the Beast. This fountain shows a fully armoured bear holding a flag with the Zaringen family coat of arms. At his feet is another bear cub, who supposedly represents the bear found by Duke Berthold V of the Zaringen family. The fountain likely shows the emergence of Bern as a strong and mature city from a young cub. The sixth fountain is supposed to represent the biblical Samson, an Israelite warrior who possessed enormous strength and discipline in order to overthrow his enemies. This is seen in his ability to confront and eliminate a terrifying lion on his journey to the Philistines. Again, the fountain appears to reflect symbolism in the tarot deck. This is very similar to the strength card found in the Major Arcana, which, unlike the violent nature of Samson's confrontation with a lion, often shows a female figure in a white robe taming a lion who appears to be relinquishing its potentially violent nature. What is interesting 
is that the lion can be seen on the previous fountain, Zaringerbrunnen, as the symbol of a special order within the German Zaringen family. In 1218, following Berthold's death, Bern became free from the reign of the Zaringen family as their dynasty collapsed. Could this fountain show Bern's strength in being released from the jaws of the Zaringen dynasty? Not unlike Samson, this fountain is quite direct in its representation of Lady Justice, the Roman personification of law and order. Her eyes are bound by a scarf, so her perception is not clouded by her subjective bias. The sword represents strength of conviction and the scales, fairness and equality before any worldly authorities. It seems a narrative is forming regarding the history of Bern. At her feet are the heads of a pope, an emperor, a governor and the mayor, the authorities of religion, monarchy, government and the republic all have their eyes closed in submission to a superior will. Sadly, this statue is a replica of the original, which was torn down in 1986 by unknown individuals. It is suspected to be an act by the Jurassic Separatists, an activist group who wanted political separation and independence from one of the cantons in Switzerland where Bern is situated. The original statue is still under restoration at the Museum of Bern. The flag carrier depicts an armoured man carrying one of the flags of Bern. Like other statues, a small bear clings to his leg, except this time like a child holding on for safety, pressing himself against the man's leg to be as close as possible. Historically, the flag bearer's role was to lead troops to battle. He was responsible for protecting the peace and dignity of his people. It was one of the only two political and military roles from which the potential to become Lord Mayor was chosen. From this, we can see the identity of Bern's socio-political grip becoming increasingly more proud and autonomous since the disappearance of the Zaringen family. The Ninth Fountain stands just in front of Bern Minster, the central religious hub of the medieval city. The Minster is an impressive Gothic style building with some incredibly intricate carvings depicting fights between the forces of heaven and hell. Its construction started in 1421, but the main tower, which stands at 100.3 metres tall, was only completed in 1893, making it the tallest cathedral in the whole of Switzerland. The fountain shows the biblical Moses holding up a tablet representing the Ten Commandments. On his head are two rays of light which looked like horns. Horns had been used to historically identify Moses in painting and sculpture. Some say that this was due to a mistranslation by Saint Jerome, who interpreted the Hebrew word Quran or Keren as horned, but it can also mean ray of light. However, pre-Christianity, horns were often used to demonstrate power, authority and importance but due to the demonization of pagan deities such as Pan, for being too material and earthly centered, horns very quickly became the symbols of the devil and his demonic entities. Moses' horns were disposed of at some point during the medieval era. However, Geng paid homage to the original depictions by making a compromise, dropping the literal horns in place of two very suggestive rays of light. Only a few years before Griang built the fountains had the plague hit Bern. This had a huge effect on the socio-religious and political climate of the country. In January 1528, the Protestant Reformation came into full swing and the government ordered all Catholic icons to be discarded from the Minster. By April of the same year, this had spread across the entire canton. Another step in the direction of Bern becoming increasingly socially autonomous by rejecting previously unchallenged authoritative structures. And lastly, we have the runner. This fountain has moved location several times and until 1663 was supposed to have been known as the fountain by the lower gate. 
probably alluding to its original location. His appearance seems to merely represent burn related themes as some of the other previous fountains did, such as the bear hugging his leg. I can only assume that he is known as the runner due to his tendency to move location so frequently. But wait, that's only 10 fountains. What about the last one? Riffley Brunen was the hardest fountain for me to find. As it turns out, I had to return back to the start of my journey to find him. His location is the only fountain amongst the more contemporary part of the city, not far from the train station and corporate high street. I found him to be an evasive trickster, as upon locating it was too dark and late in the day to take sufficient footage. Obviously I returned the following morning to catch him before he disappeared again. It was also more challenging to research exactly which folklore character Riffley was supposed to depict. For this reason, I have given him the status of zero, as opposed to number 11. Like the fool in the tarot, he is about to embark on a journey of Burns history, starting with the Piper. But he stands apart from the rest, to me, as less of a checkpoint of this history, and more of an underlying archetypal force which underpins the narrative of not only Burns evolution, but the evolution of the entire western civilization. For me, the trickster is the driving force behind much of the desire to progress and enlighten. And that is exactly what I believe Grieng was symbolizing with these 11 statues as the renaissance emerged from the dark ages. After doing some research, it appears Riffley Brunner is supposed to depict Sagittarius Riffley a 14th century folklore figure in Bern who fought in the 1339 Law Pen War between the Republic of Bern and the coalition of West Swiss nobility. A knight, known as Jordan von Bergestein, assumed that the Bernese army were retreating and smugly declared their defeat, laughing from his castle window. At this moment, Riffley saw him and took the opportunity to shoot his arrow at Jordan killing him instantly, mid laughter. The tables turned at that point, giving way for Byrne to become victorious in the war. <laughs>